well, 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 welcome to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Extra Kick Podcast. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Dylan Bellis, and I've got to say that I am so excited to be back on the air with you all, and I just wanted to say thank you for all the great feedback that you provided during our brief little hiatus on our daily podcast, and thank you so much for influencing us to continue to generate content and to provide useful and practical information for you guys on the run. This really means a lot to us. Feedback is what fuels the machine. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode today, and thank you so much for tuning in. So today I want to talk about getting out of a training rut. And what I mean by rut is that mid-cycle sort of feeling where you're just a little bit drained. Maybe it's midweek. Maybe there's a lot of extra stress adding on top of the running-related stress. But it's just those weeks where we feel quite bogged down and tired and we don't really have the motivation to get up and out like we would like to. And first off, I'd like to say that this is completely normal. This happens to the best runners in the world. It's not everybody wants to get up and go train every single day. But there's a discipline to it and, and there's a habitual nature to this sport and this training that sometimes we have to get up and out even when we don't quite feel like it. But here are a few things that I've really found to be effective and ensuring that you stick with your schedule and ways in which you can break up some of that monotony and the fatigue that comes in both mental and physical forms. So to set my day up the best way possible, I try to have everything planned out beforehand. So if I'm running in the morning, I tend to have everything set out so I don't have to think about it the morning of. It's much more effective and to likely do something if you don't have to take a lot of extra unnecessary steps to go and do it. If you have a lot of time between when you're waking up and when you're going out to run or between work and running, whatever it is, however you shape your runs, the less likely you are to do it. So planning ahead, making sure that you have time for everything and prioritizing what needs to be done and prioritizing your sleep. Getting in rest is incredibly important, not just for running in our physical state, but also cognitively and making sure that we're not just strong runners, but we're strong at our job and we're strong at our family life and, and we're good at all the things that are incredibly important to us. So after these things are checked and if you have time, I think it's great to get in your car and to drive to a local park or drive to a trailhead somewhere that allows you to take the stress off the body and the mind. If you're running somewhere all the time, it's somewhere that you've, the loop you've done a million times over and over, the harder it is for you to really want to get out and do it because you know the steps, you know where you're going. It's just, it's too much of a routine in that sense. So I think it's good to break it up, add some scenery, get on the trails. If you're feeling a bit tired and overcome and you've, you're more so of a, a road runner. So you do a lot of your roads around, uh, runs around the city. I think it's good to take it off road, get on softer surfaces, break things up, forget about the watch, go by time, go by feel, just let the run come to you. Turn your headphones on, listen to a podcast, put some music on, really do your best to just tune out and listen to yourself internally rather than focusing that effort externally. I promise you, you will enjoy your run to a much greater extent if you drop all the pressures, all the excess at the door. So, you know, on these days where you're just feeling overcome, there's a lot of stress involved, it's okay to cut back. It's okay to slow down. You're not going to lose anything by cutting your eight miler into four or deciding that instead of running nine minute pace, I really need to take it 930 today. You have to work with what you have and what's going on in your life. We understand that not everybody is going to be a professional runner. Not everybody has the time to 
run at any time they want and that be the sole priority of their day. We understand that you've got things to do and we've got to set ourselves up so that we can effectively achieve all the things and all the goals that we set out. One of the other things that I really, really enjoy doing is surrounding myself with other runners, getting involved with the community, having some accountability outside of myself and my coaches. It's much easier for myself to get out the door if I know that someone else is relying on me. I think that's an incredible influence, having somebody there to, to, keep, you, to keep you grounded to allow you to feel motivated and excited, and not only to elevate your own training, but to elevate theirs as well. So, you know, those are a few things that I think that you should really take into, into mind. Reading is good as well. I like to find inspiration from outside resources, um, whether that is listening to podcasts or reading books or listening to music, um, watching inspirational videos on YouTube. There's, there's ways in which we can work ourselves up we can change our mindset, we can reframe the way that we think and approach things, and the way that we set up our accountability in our own training to ultimately put ourselves in the best position to recover and to get back to feeling good again. Um, there's a lot of monotony in this sport, in this training. It's, it's a lot of doing the same thing over and over again. And we have to have those little breaks, those little points in time where it's me time. It's less about the training, but more so our own, phys our own physiology, our own mental and physical health. You have to have those. Those have to fit in between the hard days and the long days. And the way that we approach it, there's lots of different ways in which we can set it up. But um, those are just a few things that I have found to be incredibly effective in my own life. And I suggest you you give it a try. If you find yourself in that mid rut, um, mid cycle rut, you know, try to get more organized. Stay organized. Stay accountable. Change your scenery, and allow yourself to have a, a different frame of reference. You know using motivation from others or um, outside resources or incredible tools to take with you moving forward. So um, I hope that everybody else is, or hope that all of you guys who are listening today, you know, are not experiencing this, but if you do, it's completely normal and it happens and it's something that's completely regular and you just have to work your way through it and stay strong and motivated and determined to, to get through it. Um, so yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed this small podcast for you guys today. Hope that you're enjoying your run or you're enjoying uh, a nice fresh cup, a cup of coffee in the morning or a nice tea before you go to bed tonight. I hope everybody has a great day. This is Coach Dylan Bellis. Thank you for listening to the Runners Connect Run to the Top Extra Kick podcast.